Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. Now in today's video, we're going to discuss the air element. In past episodes of this series, I talked about the earth element. That was the most recent one I did and I covered the fire element. So I'll put links below in case you want to watch those as well, in case you missed out. But today we're going to cover the air element and I'm very excited to cover this one. I'm kind of in my element here. I, I, I think I am anyway. Well, I'm a bit of an airhead. Do you know what I mean? Like <laughs> this is where I belong. Uh, because air, this is all about thought energy, right? People who spend too much time in their minds. I think I might be one of those people. If you spend too much time in your mind, actually, this is another thing that I thought of, which I didn't write down. I'm going to write it on the whiteboard here. I'm going to put uh, Gemini and music. So we're going to talk about that as well. See, I've been thinking about this all day. I've been writing my notes, got my whiteboard here. It's all going on. By the way, I also wanted to say that there's going to be no politics in this video whatsoever. So if you want to just hang out, have fun, get a cup of tea, contemplate a beautiful element in nature, then you're very much in the right place. We're going to change the pace of the day. We're going to unwind and we're going to think about beautiful things like the air element. So I've got written down here, thought energy. This is the home of thought energy, right? Thoughts. In tarot, which I've also been studying at the same time, which is so much fun, it's represented the swords, right? The swords and that's arguments and it's words and it's, you know, slicing and dicing, right? Uh, very much so. It's, it's that kind of energy as well. We define things here, right? We're in the abstract realm here as well. We're also dealing with the Akashic records. Akash is sky, right? So the Akashic records, you know, the, the concept of everything is written. And I think that's one of the reasons why we love astrology so much, because we're the kind of people who want to find out what is written. What's in my destiny? Is there something destined? Is there something I'm meant to do? That if I don't do it, you know, it would have been a terrible life or something like that. Uh, and I always like what Yogananda has to say about that, that, you know, 75% of it is, well, he believes quite destined and 25% is free will. And I've got videos about that on the channel. So if you want to explore and have a look, I've definitely talked about that in some depth. But, you know, what is written? What are we contracted to do? And I've got this note here about contracts. We will talk about contracts. In the earth element, I mentioned because the earth element was the first time we met Saturn. So that's two, six and 10. And we saw Saturn here. And I said that, you know, in nature, we've got this beautiful thing of flowers open at a certain time. And how is it that the flower cut in the vase knows how to behave in the same way, how to wake up at the same time as its friends out in the ground, you know, all these kind of things. So there's a time dimension in earth in a way that there isn't in fire uh, yes, fire and water. We're going to cover that in water. I'll talk about the timelessness of water. I'm going to have to think about that, but uh, there's a theory, uh, there's an emerging theory, and it seems to be true. Actually, I did think about it even with this air element, and it holds true. Here in the air element, we've got Saturn. Okay, so we have got a time dimension. Every time you see Saturn, do think about time. Also do think about materialization, how he materializes, but definitely time is really important here. So he is old father time. And I do think that in the air element, this is where he defines time. So astrology is here too. 11th house, Satya Bishak, people who love to observe the sky and the stars. That's here. Saturn, father time, the creator of time. We have psychological time and we have clock time. Now for def definitions around time and what time is, and there are so many and there's a lot to study here. It's a huge, huge topic and I might do videos about it. But psychological time and clock time. Clock time, Eckhart Tolle defines it as being, you know, you have a meeting at 2 p.m. or you finish school in, you know, the late 90s or uh, you know that in, 2027 20, you're going to get married or something like that right so there's clock time there's simple useful practical clock time there's also psychological time which Eckhart talks about and psychological time I believe is 
you know, an easy way of thinking about that is baggage, right? It's an emotional baggage. It's you're leaking present moment energy into something that happened in your past. So maybe a messy divorce or, uh, you know, I don't know, you failed at something or something bad happened and you keep thinking about it or you keep letting it define you or there's a power leakage and, you know, um, you have this relationship and you're, what you're doing, according to Eckhart, is you're clocking up or building up psychological time. It can get quite heavy. And I thought about that in relation to air, the air houses, right? And we, what do we have next door to these air houses? We've got water. And water is quite fascinating when you look at it in combination with air. Because what do you have with water? Well, water, so if air is thought energy, water is our emotions. It's how we feel. And I definitely learned that through tarot as well, because the cups, that's all about love. You know, you offer your cup of water to someone. You offer your love to someone. It's that kind of energy, right? There's a lot of emotion there with water and when you mix water with air that's where you get psychological time that's where you can get baggage happen you can get storm clouds right you can get someone stormy emotions coming into your space a big part of these houses is the fact that they are just space right they're air they're space they're spacious so this is 11th house aquarius it's known as the water bearer so the water bearer is the space that bears water. It holds clouds, right? And clouds, that's emotion. And the water bearer, there's more to this. It's kind of like, um, you know, you, you, you hold space for someone else. One thing about these houses is that we definitely hold space for other people. Who do we hold space for? We hold space for... Uh, our partners, our marriage partners, people that we are married to, partners, business partners, all kinds of partnerships are here. We hold space for colleagues. I'm going to put colleagues here. But there's more to it. There's siblings as well, very much so. We've got siblings here as well in the third house. We've also got friends, right? A good friend is a person who has space. They have space and ability to bear witness to what you're going through. A good friend will be able to listen to hours <laughs> of you telling them all your problems. But if you do that too much, you're gonna clog up their space with all your storm clouds and that person might get a bit resentful and not wanna hang out with you so much, all right? So it's definitely a balance. When you have a friend you wanna do uh, both. You want to make sure you have space to listen to their stuff too. A good friendship is one where it's even. Okay, so not necessarily the one where you're the one that's just listening to hours of stuff and that's the end. No, it has to be even. So make sure of that, right, as you maintain your friendships. But this concept of bearing witness is really very important here because there's a spiritual function of bearing witness, right? When there's a marriage ceremony, contract, right? Contract, spiritual contracts. It all belongs here in this air realm. So when you're getting married, you need to have a witness, don't you? Uh, and courts, courts are very important here in the air element. So we've got a lot of great lawyers come out of this house. I did have a little peek at L. Lynn Wood's uh, chart. I was able to have a look from the moon. I know it's a bit naughty, but I did have a look. And he's got a terrific Libra sign. He's got um, Mercury, Sun and Moon there. Beautiful, right? That's, this is the lawyer who can get up and speak in front of people and speak very well, very effectively. So that's a really important thing here. Courts. We do have courts here. We've got the kind of barristers, the kind of lawyers that speak in front of people as opposed to perhaps maybe the solicitors and the more uh, desk bound and paper bound people who work here in the sixth house. These lawyers are a little bit different to the seventh house ones. The seventh house ones perform, 
right? They're also very good at negotiating as well because there's value exchange here too, right? Value exchange, of course, fluctuates. You know, there's an airy quality to that as well. But yeah, there's just so much here in the air element. If we're looking at the court system, so we've got courts here. where barristers get up to speak. We've got the court of public opinion here. Okay, so a court is like, a, it's a space, there's a lot of space in a courtroom, right? And there's kind of words flying around. So this perfect air element type of stuff. Here we've got the court of public opinion. What is that? That is the media, right? Court of public opinion. That's the media. If you have a look at Rupert Murdoch's chart, terrific third house, terrific interchange and dynamic interchange between the first lord, third lord, and seventh lord. He's got a very fire and air type of situation going on there. It's, it's really good to look at. But I always think of him as a really strong third house kind of guy because of media. And this is the court of public opinion, which is being relied on quite heavily uh, these days it seems so that's kind of interesting there what do we have here I tend to think this is social media I've had a look at the charts of some of the fav famous Brit crew social media giants you know they're all in their 20s and living the life and being social media stars and having a great time now these guys one of them in particular i watch her a lot she has millions of subscribers and she's wonderful and she has a beautiful 11th house and she's got capricorn there and it's like she's a professional friend to the masses it's quite an extraordinary chart when you look at it so Air is just this fantastic thing, right? There's so much here. There's also commitment. There's responsibility. Commitment and responsibility. You commit. There's, there's lots of spiritual functions that go on with these. You know, like your marriage partner, you commit to them. Uh, it's very different to the, the fire that happens here. One other thing that I will go through is looking at, say, for example, so I think I did touch on, did I touch on air and blended with water? I think I did when I was talking about psychological time. So we can see that emotions and storm clouds, your own storm clouds that you generate yourself, but then there are the storm clouds of others that you hold space for, right? And you bear witness to another person. So that happens here in this element. So we've got that combination. When we look at earth and air, I've mentioned this many times on the channel that that produces music, right? Earth and air, we've got music that gets made out of that. The rustling of the leaves. I was out in the garden with my mum the other day and there was this beautiful wind and the camphor laurel trees were just had all this beautiful music, right? The leaves were tapping each other and the rustling of leaves. It was so beautiful. And I was just saying that, yeah, that's music. You know, it's earth and air combining together. So we've got music when we combine earth and air. Now what about fire and air? What do we get there? And I've mentioned this on the channel a bit, that we get fame, right? You have people fanning your flames. So let's take a look at this in a bit more detail. How are we doing for time? Oh, we're, gosh, wow, okay. Uh, I must be having a good time. Time flies when you're having fun. I don't know who's still here. That's okay. <laughs> I've got like a four minute average or something on my channel. So if you're one of the hardy ones who stuck around, thank you. <laughs> so now uh, let's see here. We've got who's fanning your flames, right? Who's making you famous? So Leo, we have very famous people here, but they can have a very large crowd of people up here um, with, with all that air making that fire kind of um, very bright and visible. Okay, so these are our firehouses here. Draw a bit of fire in. Uh, what else do we have when we blend fire and air? We have original thinking. And I was contemplating this in the morning that, yeah, there's something about original thinking here. And I think that's one of the things is I was 
studying the chart of Freddie Mercury, who you will see coming up in the Masters series. And I talked about this, did I talk about this there? I think I did, but I definitely learnt this through looking at his chart because he was such an original thinker. And how was that happening? It was definitely happening by some of his fire mm, blending with the air element. You will see this, you will see that it creates a very original thinker, someone who can be very creative and express that. Because these are, this is how you express. It's communication. You know, through our words we give out ideas and content and all kinds of things. So, yeah, there's a lot of communication that goes on. What else goes on here? Ah, yes, Gemini music. Okay, I jotted this down because this is another thing that I started thinking about with the time dimension. Time is a very linear thing. It happens in a sequence. It's like one thing at a time. And it only travels in one direction. And all that kind of thing, you know, the, the, the linear nature and simplicity of time. And I was thinking about, you know, can we hold more than one thought in the mind at a time? And I googled that and it said, you know, you can hold like three or four things in the mind at a time. But there are some genius people who can hold many things in their mind at one time. And I started thinking about how when I'm writing, very often I like to listen to music. And what is that about? Why do I like doing that? There are some writers who love listening to music while they write. It helps them. And it certainly helps me in much the way that some writers, they need a glass of wine or, you know, they need like a cigar or something. And so there's all that and that helps too, right? So that's got mind expanding properties. Ah, yes, this is why. See, there's mind expanding properties because the mind is doing two things at the same time. This is a very Gemini thing, doing two things at the same time. So that expands the mind and I think it expands the space. Your, it expands your air space kind of thing and you're able to bring more in and send more out. This is really something quite fascinating because I've been trying to work out, yeah, why, why do I like listening to music and writing at the same time? Surely writing should be just an activity where you need silence and quiet and you know you sit and write but I actually don't find that. I find that there's kind of stimulation in the brain or something and I think what it's doing is it's literally expanding my airspace so that I can bring more stuff in and therefore send more stuff out and I'm sure that you know drinking the glass of wine or uh, smoking the cigar or whatever it is that people like to do I'm sure that that has a similar effect though I haven't experimented so much with that uh, those things tend to just and eh, knock me out doesn't work so <laughs> I don't really do much of that but um, but music yes I do a lot of music I can't do without music it's such an important thing so I think that's everything that I really wanted to cover with this I've covered psychological time I've covered the, the blends what else have I got written down here yeah, capacity. How many thoughts can you hold in the mind at once? I've definitely covered that. Bearing witness. But I mean, I really do think that the, the key critical things with the air element definitely has to do with holding space. Bearing witness, right? When you witness, you, you witness beautiful things like people getting married, you know, but equally if they're dumping each other or whatever, then you know, you're know you off with your friends and you're passing your storm clouds onto them and then they might help you and you know hopefully they say the right words to kind of help you dissolve some of that. But um, yeah, people are either bearing witness to beautiful things or sad things, you know, and we're there for each other in that way. There's definitely a massive social element uh, social part of the of the air element which is just so important so holding space bearing witness commitment and responsibility I think these are really important things when it comes to studying the air element and I'm sure there are more things that you know hopefully I'll cover in other videos I know one of you asked a really good question last time in the earth element to say okay 
that's been a nice overview, but how do we apply this stuff? Sure, that was a great question. And what I would say is do keep watching my master's series because that is a place where I'm really giving away how I read and how I, I put things together. And you'll notice as well, if you watch that, that you know, the same elements and the same things get spoken about in slightly different ways and, and no two are ever the same. And that's very true of a reading. No two readings of mine are ever the same. They're all very unique and individual, even though I'm dealing with all the same elements. But that is an important thing with a reading, right? It, you know, there, there are rules, but uh, there's, there's such a uniqueness to every single human being. And I think that's one of the things I'm trying to, trying to figure out through a chart. I'm trying to see and feel that. Uh, as I go so but definitely um, watch the master series that's I, I there's quite a lot given away about how I read there so guys I'm gonna end this video here it's been really lovely chatting with you this of course is an air element activity that we're doing right now you know I'm speaking you're holding space and listening it's, it's really amazing so thank you for being here and I look forward to seeing you next time mm -hmm.